Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Recently I picked up a large lot of old computers from a local recycler, and big thank you to Electronic Recycling Australia who kindly donated these computers to me. They're one of South Australia's leading e-waste recyclers and they help and provide people with disabilities ongoing employment. So let's take a quick look at these old machines. They're dusty, old, and I don't know if they work. It's crazy to think that old machines like this are still being thrown out. And honestly, it'll be pretty cool to see what's inside some of these computers. This really dusty one here is about 37 years old as well. So let's try firing them up. The first old beige box we're looking at comes from Meltech Computers, and also something in Thailand. I'm going to assume that's where it was made. There is nothing online about them, but something I do know is that this was sold at cash converters for $55 under their budget line. And you're also not allowed to open the case, or that warranty is as good as gone. And I also love this CD-ROM drive. The blue lettering really makes it stand out. Something else that stood out to me was this message about the CPU being unworkable, whatever that means. But overall this PC isn't too dirty and has next to no signs of rust, so let's open it up. It didn't take much effort as the case screws were already missing. It does look like that all the cards have become dislodged, likely due to this being thrown around a lot in various recycling bins. It does appear to have a hard drive, so let's try booting it up. The first signs are promising, a 150MHz Pentium and 16MB of RAM. This is actually the bare minimum for running Windows 98. It looks as if we've encountered some corrupt or misnamed files though. Even loading into safe mode encountered problems. Maybe the previous owner tried sabotaging the Windows installation. And this old cash converter's budget PC will definitely make for a cool video in the near future. And up next is this mid-90s Acer Aspire. It's kind of green and a real chunky unit. It was even assembled in Australia, according to the text on the back. A brief Google search led me to find that this model came with matching peripherals. Appearance is subjective, but I'm honestly not the biggest fan of the air vents on the side. But it is always a welcome sight seeing the design for Windows 95 sticker. Not so much the rust forming around the VGA output though. In fact, upon flipping it over, I found even more rust on the base. I'd imagine this mentioned the specifications of this particular PC. So let's take a look inside this odd green machine. And after removing two screws and pulling back the cover, we get our first look at the spacious interior. Rather dusty, but it is complete with a hard disk and plenty of room for expansion. With my fingers crossed, I pressed the power button, lights came on, and it did seem to work. There is 16 megabytes of RAM and a short time later, an IDE drive error. I tried detecting the hard drive in the BIOS, but I didn't have luck. But this, like the last machine, will make for a very interesting video in the future. Next up is another beige box. This one made by Hypertech, an Australian PC manufacturer. And this one was owned by AIS Media, and I think that stands for the Australian Institute of Sport. This was part of the trademarked High Performance series, but that trademark has actually expired, so anyone can use it now. And I've definitely seen this sticker before, and please comment below if you know what it is. There are several PCI cards, and it's in good condition, apart from this little adapter which is really bent out of shape. Inside, it appears to be complete with a hard disk, and due to there being next to no airflow, the internals are actually pretty clean. And with a satisfying click, the machine fired into life. It's running a 133 MHz processor and a whopping 49 MB of RAM. Not only that, it boots into Windows 95. Once again, this will be an awesome machine to do a full video on. Next up, we've got a Slim Boy. It's a Dell GX1, circa 1999, and is actually one of the newest computers I picked up in this lot. Running a Pentium 3 CPU and potentially Windows NT, and I'm hoping there isn't too much rust inside. Pressing on the two clips on the side allows us to enter into the Dell. It makes me feel so much nostalgia seeing one of these as we had them back in primary school. And while the lights did turn on, nothing appeared on screen. This is going to need some work, but should also make for a fun video in the future. It'll definitely need a good cleaning, that's for sure. And in the optical drive is a brother printer CD from 2012, meaning this was used in the last 10 years. Now we're taking a look at the first computer tower off the lot. One that features a turbo button, which likely doesn't work with the Celeron processor that's apparently in here. This tower looks a bit too old to be running a Celeron honestly, and the build date of 1996 confirms this, two years before the first Celeron. So let's open up this mysterious old tower which may or may not have a Celeron processor. Okay, I wasn't expecting to see this. The hard disk and for some reason the CPU are simply loose in the case. It's also quite apparent that the hard drive has been smashed with a hammer, 
and after removing the casing, it doesn't look particularly damaged. However, the platters are completely jammed up. Well, that sure is one way to secure your computer's data. Another way would be using today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. If you're after a VPN that's secure with fast connection speeds across an unlimited number of devices, click the link in the description below to get Atlas VPN for only $1.39 per month and get an extra three months for free. Well, the hard drive is clearly not going to work, but I did put the processor back in the socket. Nothing shows up on screen, meaning this computer is going to need more work in the future. Did you know Hyundai made computers? Yeah, I didn't know that. In fact, this was manufactured exactly 30 years ago in December of 91. Back then, it was still common to have a five and a quarter inch floppy drive. This should have something like a 40 megabyte hard drive inside. Well, hopefully it should. And the blue power button is also so much fun to press. And inside the case, it isn't too dusty, but it's missing the hard drive, sadly. Powering this PC is an AMD 386 processor, a clone of Intel's 386 chip. And when I pressed the power button, it quickly displayed an image. This shows us that the system has eight megabytes of RAM, quite a lot for a machine of this vintage. Once again, this is a computer that will make for an interesting video at some point on my channel. Next is a really tall tower, the newest computer I picked up in fact. This even has a Seagate tape drive and you can still buy the tapes cheaply online, but big problem, it's missing the power supply. I'll have to find another one. And inside, it's probably got a Pentium 4 CPU. It's missing the power supply and the hard drive, but has RAM, the CPU, and an NVIDIA FX5200 graphics card. And last of all, the NEC APC3, the oldest computer in this lot, being made in 1984, and it's built like a tank. I'd like to know where this has been sitting to build up so much dirt. Inside is apparently 327 kilobytes of RAM, a substantial amount for the time. And since there are dual five and a quarter inch floppy drives, I don't know if there will be a hard drive inside. I also no longer own a CGA monitor, so I have no way of testing to see if it works. So I'll have to try and find another one somewhere. And lifting off the dusty cover reveals even dustier internals. If there was a hard drive, it would have gone here. And since I don't want to start a fire, I won't be powering this up until I've cleaned it out. Those slots at the back appear to be for RAM among other things. And here's one of the RAM cards. Quite a lot of chips for 320 kilobytes of memory. If I can find a CGA monitor and perhaps some five and a quarter inch floppy disks, this will make for an awesome restoration video. Stay tuned for more videos on these old computers in the near future. And it's honestly pretty crazy that these were still being thrown out recently, even computers as old as like 1984. And also a big thank you to Daniel and his team at Electronic Recycling Australia for putting these aside and allowing me to make videos on them. They've also got an online store and you can use a discount code that is in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.